Hey friends, welcome to the Raising Boys and Girls podcast. I'm Sissy Goff. And I'm David Thomas. And I'm Melissa Trevathan. And we're so glad you joined us for this conversation. Let's dive in. Need to Breathe is a Grammy-nominated, multi-platinum band placing five number one albums all across the Billboard chart spectrum, racking up two billion career streams and scoring multi-platinum chart-topping hits. And they've done it all while filling venues across the globe, either as headliners or with a diverse array of superstars like Taylor Swift, One Republic, and Tim McGraw. On his own, Bear Reinhardt has recorded two solo projects as Wilder Woods, his newest release is Fever Sky, out now on Dual Tone Records. You so want to get that project. He and his wife, Mary, who is a brilliant, gifted clinician, have three sons and live outside of Nashville. Enjoy our conversation with Mary and Bear Reinhardt. Well, we are so excited to get to sit down with the two of you and have wanted to meet you both for a long time. And so it's a privilege to get to have time with you. And we all start us off talking a little bit about your story, where you grew up, how you met, about your family. Yeah, of course. Um, we are. We went to college together. Okay. At Furman, I went and played football Furman. there. Oh, wow. Um, believe it or not, a lot of, a long time ago. Um, and she was, we met kind of at FCA, really. I used to like sing songs at the, you know, thing. You were leading the, worship. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I was, I, and I was not an outgoing person, still not super shy. Um, and so I had to send someone to be like, hey, the kicker on the team. I was like, hey, you know, will you ask her if she'd maybe go on a date with me? So it's like some, it's really embarrassing now thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> if my kid did that, I'd be like, come on, dude. The uh, funny but, thing is, though, I like, I mean, had a crush on you before that. And so when you sent um, old Danny Marshall to be like, well, what do you think of Bear? I was like, I mean, I, I, he's she cool. played it cool. He's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so, so. And the inside, I was uh, like, please ask me out on a date. <laughs> yeah. So we got wow. married right after college, really. Um, wow. She finished in three years. So she's much smarter than me, obviously. Um, I was red shirted. So I was five. So she was younger than me, but we ended up finishing at the same time and so i think i was like 20 you know, yeah like 21 and we like had no job prospects i was a musician you know like the band had started in college um and it was wild there for a while it was we were renting a, a duplex for 350 bucks a month and wow. <laughs> sometimes you wish you could go back to that <laughs> not the pretty... duplex but the 350 dollars <laughs> uh, yes um yeah so and it just and really like it took a while for us to get signed and then do all as we were in vans for a long time it was kind of wow. a crazy life um she was our first booking agent were you um, really married awesome. that's awesome yeah in college i i like gave her the script you know like call this place don't take no for an answer you know that kind of make sure you get two hundred dollars oh no you wow. y'all were really unhappy with me one night we had to like drive three hours and I think they only paid y'all like 50 bucks. Like, like, this oh, can't tried. pay for gas. We're going <laughs> to, yeah. <laughs> no, was awesome. So she's just been involved from the very beginning, which I think is a really cool part of what we've, you know, been able to do with the band um, and our relationship. And ironically, we, uh, so this was in Greenville. Oh, well, we got married in Columbia, South Carolina, where I'm from. Um, oh. But we came to Nashville on our honeymoon. In parks, no. didn't have any money. But and we stayed at Union Station. Oh. So kind of awesome. full circle. We spent all the money we got for our wedding on jeans. Exactly. So I should <laughs> tell you everything you know, <laughs> need to know about us. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. practical definitely plans came at all. Home. Right. Yeah. Definitely came home from our honeymoon. And this like makes us sound really old. But looked in the newspaper for jobs. You know, yeah. circle like, those. What can called we do? a few. So I did some construction stuff or like some substitute teaching, substitute teaching which was tough. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's that's a one small part of our life. But that's kind of, yeah. I think, where, you know, where you met and where the relationship mm. grew into what it is. And, and um, we've got David's three little boys now. Furman. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey. Such a great school. And I love Greenville. Oh, man. I, yeah. Yeah, There's something about Furman that every person I've ever met that went there is really kind. I don't nice. know what it is, yeah, but I, I mean, either. really, That's it's very awesome. cool. And I'm sorry yeah. I interrupted you no. about the boys. Jump back in. Yeah, we've got three little boys, nine, six, and three, um, completely feral. And, <laughs> we did read know, wild things. Uh, that was be. a very helpful yeah, lot. I mean, so. <laughs> but really fun and like completely different. And um, so, yeah, we're in that phase of it. Just it's, I don't know, we'll talk more about it, I'm sure, but it's it's so awesome. Um, 
you know, coming home, like the, the humbling factor of having kids mm. doing what I do is really great. Mm. Um, and so they've like, just, we were just talking about, they just, they've gotten old enough where at least the two older ones kind of know what it is I do and at least have some level of respect for that's work and, mm. and they like it and think it's cool. And that's really uh, fun for me when they come out to the shows and I can kind of treat them like VIP when they're out, you know, <laughs> that whole thing. Um, so yeah. Funny. Yeah. That's there are plan. guinea pigs too. I, I'm in mental health as well. So I get you to are. practice all, all the things on them. And so <laughs> yep. what are you well, doing in mental health? So, um, about five years into our marriage, we moved to Charleston and I went to medical university of South Carolina and became a family nurse practitioner. And then, um, that was in like 2013 and we moved here six years ago. Um, so I was practicing and somebody asked me the question, like, what was your, when were you most fulfilled in your job? And as I reflected on it, it was really when I was working with, um, patients or families in crisis or life Mm. transition. So I went back to Vanderbilt and added, um, psych mental health. So, um, Anyways, so that's been. So are you practicing now? I am. I'm actually starting my own private practice um, in well, a month or two. We so. need to get all your info to be referring <laughs> brought, to you all I the time. I might have brought some cards for y'all. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mary, so, that's awesome. Um, so that's been fun with like what he does having, mm. you know, after we had a few pennies to rub together to kind of have my own sort of path too. Yes. But I feel like it's been really sweet. The Lord's kind of interweaved it all. Mm. That's so but cool. that being oh, said, right. he and my kids are my guinea pig. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <Awesome. laughs> we're excited Good. through this conversation to talk about your life with all these boys. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. excited to have that conversation. Mm. But speaking of your boys, I was telling the two of you before we hit record that speaking of boys, I took my boys, my twin boys, to see Need to Breathe in concert at Red Rocks Amphitheater. I had never been, always wanted to go, and it was insane you all are <laughs> you. so unbelievably talented for every person listening who loves their music i could not encourage you strongly enough to go see them live like it just oh man thank accelerates you. everything that's amazing mm. and thanks you um i have to tell you that one of my favorite moments you were talking about it when you brought your kids your families out on stage yeah. at the end and yeah. it was so fun to watch that and i remember thinking your boys must be thinking, my dad has the coolest job in the world. Like, looking at well, this Well, it's funny. They do. All they, of it. they, and they, it was like, that was one of my, the coolest things that I've, I've ever gotten to do. Cause mm. we played there five or six times the first time that they knew what Red Rocks was. And they, like we had told them like a year ago, you know, maybe we can go. And they just didn't forget it. They're like, we're going. You know, it was like, this is a non negotiable. Um, so they had a ton of fun, uh, but they still do. Like, they're like, Dad, I wish you were a baseball player. And I was like, <laughs> that is humbling. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, why? You know, they're like, because you'd have a baseball card. Oh, wow. And I was like, is that all it takes? I can get some made. And it was like, <laughs> you go yeah. pose for them yeah, for Christmas. Like, what are we? Yeah. 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 So there's a level of always with the, you know, the boys. They keep you humble. Yes. yes. So That's great. So sweet. <laughs> the first time they played Red Rocks, our our oldest son had just been born. I think he was like six weeks. So it was my mm. first, you know, it's a big deal, your first baby, your first night that's away. So I think I like killed myself to like leave at noon you know, on the day of the show and then be back by like six PM. And of course he was like completely fine. <laughs> right. But couldn't miss that first time playing Red Rocks. Yes. Rock, so. so great. <laughs> so great. Well, in addition to the brilliance of Need to Breathe, you have two solo projects which are incredible. Thank you, man. Yes, I appreciate it. So that. excited to encourage folks to check those out. And we love to ask you just when did you know you wanted music to be your life's work? And and what do you hope people take away from your music? Yeah, that's well, I think when I knew um was probably somewhere in college, like freshman or sophomore in college, I was playing football too. And I don't know if I just didn't think it for sure was going to be like a real career choice or what, like I tell people too now when they're like, what should I do if I'm getting into music? I'm like, don't, <laughs> you know? really? if you can not, then you mm. should. But like, I got to that point where I was like, there's, this is the only thing I want to do. Mm. Um, and really songwriting was what, 
um, drove me down that way. Like it just, it just, I, I felt like I'm a quiet person. So it was a way to express what I was going through. Um, I felt like one of the giftings was sort of perception because I am quiet. I'm in a room kind of checking everybody out and, you know, reading the room a little mm -hmm. bit. And I feel like there was that, that like led to songwriting in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it was somewhere in there. And in terms of like what I want people to take away, it's a tough question because I think it changes a lot. And like, I'm really happy with that part. Like, I know it's music. I know I want people to be inspired. Mm. I know that, you know, I know I, obviously you want people to leave the show and feel like I can be better at whatever that thing is that I do. It might be parent, might be your job, might be, I'm going to pick up guitar and start doing this. Or, um, so I feel like music does that obviously for me in different ways. Um, and I always want to feel like I'm relating something that I'm going through. I mean, I feel like there's something powerful about, or my favorite part about it is I don't necessarily know as I'm writing a song, what the end of it is. It's not a means to an end in a way. It's like, I'm, I'm sort of dealing with this thing in real time. Mm. And a lot of times it's a year later, um, when somebody comes up to me and says, Hey, this song means so much to me and my kids, or this was the, our first dance or the song or whatever it is. Like, and then it's like, it clicks to me. Oh, that was what that was about. Wow. <laughs> and I feel like there's something, um, you know, that's not super commercially successful to think that way, but it's, it's like a powerful thing to feel like, um, like God has left all these things just sitting out there for us to sort of interpret or kind mm -hmm. of be a reflection of. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my favorite part about the writing. And so mm -hmm. wherever that leads now, I kind of have to go with it a little mm -hmm. bit. She knows that's probably my biggest struggle also, because it's like, you can look and go, what, what, what you want your career to look like? Or I wish I had hits or I wish I was, you know, whatever mm -hmm. all those things are. Um, but if I'm following this thing at the beginning, the way I'm supposed to be doing it, I really can't be like that. You know, mm -hmm. it kind of has to lead me where, so that's a long winded way of saying, um, you know, I don't necessarily worry about like, even at the, at the beginning of the band stuff, I was always like, what's your mission statement? And I was like, whoa, 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 easy. I don't know. I can't, you know, it was that kind of thing. So I feel like I have to balance those two things of like staying on task of, um, you know, why I write music and what people get out of it, but not being a teacher, I guess that's probably the easiest mm -hmm. way to say it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really hesitate in songs to put a bow on it where it feels like this is what you should do. You know, <laughs> I think mm -hmm. that, that it normally doesn't relate to people in music anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, George McDonald is an author. You all know who yeah. George McDonald is. He, he has some quote in one of his books where he talks about the, that we sometimes weaken the truth and presentation and discovery makes the truth anchor itself differently, yeah, which seems like percent. what you're inviting people to do. And, and that's you so want, cool. yeah, I think there's a, another way of like putting it. I'm trying to think of the book I read this in, but, but I've Madeline always Lingle. thought, yeah, it's, yeah. And it was about this idea of like, you know, she's writing as an author to have people be a part of the conversation. They're, yes. they're their own characters. Yes. I tell the audience that from the stage a lot um, mm. because I do think that's true. They bring it to life. Like how they interpret it is the thing. So if I put too many of the details in there, it's too specific. It's mm -hmm, too, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's my own experience, which is not really what the mm -hmm, music is supposed to mm -hmm. do. That's funny. When you said that, I was just thinking about, I got to take a writing class from her oh, oh, no wow. and Lucy awesome. Shaw together. And she was talking about writing and how so often her stories write themselves and a character will appear that she never planned to appear in the story. And yeah, y'all yeah, mm -hmm. kind yeah. of vibe <laughs> together, you and Madeline. I, as I somehow, I don't know if somebody suggested Walking on Water, which is kind of oh, about her so journey as an artist. Yes. And so I'm not an artist, but pretty closely attached to one. So I was like, <laughs> you need to read this. And I feel like a lot of artists have read The War on Art and books mm -hmm. like that that mm -hmm. are kind of exploring it. But mm -hmm. I kind of love that it was like from the female perspective yes. and from, you know, decades past, yes. you know, so. It's a beautiful book. Yeah. Yes. That's so fun. <laughs> Um, okay, well, speaking of songs, do you each have a favorite of your songs? That's a yes. hard question. Well, it is hard. I think, the, like, the only reason, like, there's different criteria for, like, a song that you, you know, like or you're proud of. For me, the one I want to play for the longest, I think, right now is this, this song called West Texas Wind. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, so I wrote it during the COVID thing, and, and it was... I didn't really like, like I said, didn't really know what I was writing. I always feel like it's funny to me. I'll write a song that feels very dark, 
or like I'm in a pretty like reflective place. Mm-hmm. And I think it was during the COVID thing of like, I don't know if we can tour. I don't know yeah. if I have a job anymore. I don't know what this, you know, and and not to be over dramatic. That's what we felt. It was mm-hmm. the first time in 20 years we had been like, you got to be off the road and there's nothing you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but the song is like, so in like uh, encouraging to people, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> so I feel like there's an element of that. It's like um, interesting to me. I love singing it. So yeah. I, I always tend towards more moody songs anyways, or contemplative songs. So mm. I love that West Texas one, but Wasteland is definitely one of my favorites. Mm. And then the first song off of Into the Mystery, I really love. What's mm-hmm. the name of it? I'm I don't know. I'm like, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, <laughs> you know, know, I don't listen to my records. Uh, <laughs> I'm blanking on the name, but. That's yeah, she er, very early on. I realized with her, it's like <laughs> she's like, if she says I hate that, that's probably a hit. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> she yeah. likes the cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, the songs that like just say it. Um, she's like, I don't know if that's really, you know. Yeah. Okay, we love to talk TV shows. Yes, we do. What are you currently watching and loving these days? I have been watching an Apple show called Truth Be Told that is so scary. What about you? I just finished the new season of The Bear. I loved it. It makes me want to cook more and ask you to call me chef. (laughs) I'll try to do that from time to time, David. You know what is making me want to cook more? My Our Place cookware. I have it at home. I have it at the lake. I have it everywhere. Connie leaves it out like decorations at our house. So do I. It is beautiful. I cooked in the Always Pan 2.0 this morning. I have the Always Pan and Char. I love their colors. We have it in Sage. I even have the Wonder Oven. We make pizzas all the time. David, did you know that most cookware and appliances are made with forever chemicals? I have officially swapped out toxic kitchenware and appliances for our place's non-toxic, healthy, sustainable choices. Our place is healthy and PFAS free. Now, I pee fast on road trips when we <laughs> stop for gas, but that's not what I'm talking about here. Our Place products are made with PFAS. Most of today's nonstick pans contain PFAS, also known as Forever Chemicals, which are under increasing global scrutiny for their impact on the environment and our health. Most cookware brands continue to use these chemicals due to their low cost. I love that Our Place is a mission-driven and female-founded brand that makes beautiful kitchen products that are healthy and sustainable. Upgrade to Our Place today and say goodbye to forever chemicals in your kitchen. And did we mention they're beautifully designed in beautiful colors that feel like art objects, that elevate any home, and that make you feel creative in the kitchen? Find out why Our Place has 75,000 five-star reviews on their award-winning products, and they've been mentioned in the New York Times, Bon Appetit, and more. That's why you see Our Place in everyone's kitchen from Selena Gomez to David Beckham. And David Thomas. (laughs) Go to fromourplace.com and enter our code RBG at checkout to receive 10% off site-wide. That's from ourplace.com, code RBG. Our Place offers a 100-day trial with free shipping and returns. Okay, you have collaborated with some amazing folks. Carrie Underwood, Carly Pierce, The Warren Treaty, just to name a few. And you've sold out arenas and amphitheaters, created a documentary, done incredible things. Do you have any career highlights like moments that have really stayed with you yeah there there are a bunch that would sound very fancy you know like there are a lot of those kind of things we did some crazy we we did uh we when we were opening for taylor swift we did two nights at the garden and played david letterman the same day as we played the garden and so like had a police escort after we you know (laughs) recorded it like five in the afternoon barely made it played the show all this so there's stuff that sounds really but honestly like I think the first time we sold out the handlebar, which is this little club in Greenville, it was probably mm-hmm. 400, maybe, maybe less. And that was like, I think I was still booking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> right, I mean, this is either it, in college or right after. Anybody who knows like what it's really like to be a musician trying to make a living at it. It's uh, that beginning part is incredibly hard. Have anybody mm-hmm. pay attention or make it because you're playing to rooms that, you know, there's a hundred people in or 20 or whatever it is. And, and it's hard to make that feel magic enough. They're like, I got to tell my friends about this. Like, I went to see this band. They're all right. You know, so that part was so uh, rewarding to us to sell out the club in our 
our town. Mm -hmm. And it was like right around the time that stuff started to kind of happen. You know, you like do that and then you move up a bit, whatever. But I, I just remember like I, I feeling like walking off the stage after that was like, this is going to be okay. Like mm -hmm. we've made it in a way. Um, I think that's one we just talked about. It. I think having my boys on, I had, I had waters, our three-year-old come to Charleston and I didn't think he'd be able to make it. Cause we played at nine that night. So it's like, we're getting off stage at 11. So the song that he could come up on was at the very end of the show. And I look over there and he's still there. He's just got, you know, he's got long blonde hair. He's just kind of, you know, hanging in and I, and I waved him over and he comes up and I, I held him when I sang the whole last song. Mm -hmm. Um, that is yeah, that's it for me mm. as far as like the fact that it's been a long and winding road as mm. a band, you know, and it's not all been there's pretty been or low light. There's, mm. there's, there's <laughs> definitely and periods of low lights, you know, it's mm. been, it's um, a tough. So like the idea that we're still getting to do what we love to do and we're, it's healthier than it's ever been. And mm. we kind of have a good perspective on most things. Like we don't take it too, too seriously, not too big ups and downs and, and to have the kids like, be a part of it and, and enjoy it is pretty massive. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Well, speaking of them, y'all, the years of balancing work, family, being on the road, both of you, what have y'all learned over time? I think we're you say? still learning it because this I'm year sure. is probably been the most um, busy that we both personally have been. Mm -hmm. Usually it like goes in waves where like maybe I'm busy and he's not. I mean, yeah. he's always busy, but it's just like ramped up this year. So we're still learning. Yes. Um but yeah, I think, I mean, recently I've realized having like-minded parents around us is, is really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, having this, we have both our sets of parents live in town. Oh, that's and wonderful. Are, I mean, it is very healing to watch your parents love your children mm -hmm. well. Um, it's just a whole different experience. And then um, we have a, the maybe best, I say nanny, but she's really our life manager she's been with us for six years and wow we she's our linchpin no mm. doubt i think i think too we went through some things in our marriage like um before we had kids that were really tough and like a pretty tough period where we had to kind of lean in on going to counseling and doing all the things it was mm. like very intense for a while we didn't have kids for about we're, we're coming up on 21 years of being married so we didn't have kids for about 13 years yeah so around that i don't know 10 year mark or so it was like kind of just we really had to like fix some things before if we we're going to move on it's it felt like and so we got this habit of communicating that you know probably is rare i don't know now that i you know know that it's like but we it's not rare for us to talk an hour a night when we get into bed and it's like, let's, let's get into it. And that's, that's part awesome, of her, you know, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> a therapist now. 10,000 words a day yeah. and Bear has yeah. maybe three. <laughs> so I try to save them up until then. Yeah. But a counselor um, told us like, just keep talking. And that felt mm. like the permission to be like, you know, it's yeah. so good. And I right. think that's huge. I think too, like, you know what communication and goal setting and all that stuff i think you know we we do a little thing once a year we go away for two or three days and like talk about what the goals are for the year mm -hmm. and it's not you know some sort of success kind of thing it's more like i want her to know what my heart is for the year what's important to me mm -hmm. and it makes it easier when it does get busy of like you remember we said this is what we were going to do you kind of yeah. like um i think that's huge and then you know our thing is different us traveling so much is a is a so I think both of us, you know, really setting expectations for that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, there's always an on ramp and an off ramp. You know, as you can imagine, like with me, I'm like pretty shy uh, person. <laughs> and then I'm out there in front of 10,000 people. It's like, it's a different guy that's doing that. And I have to mm -hmm. get very kind of hyped up to do it. Like I've, I sort of allow my ego into it a little more than I would like. Mm -hmm. Um, to be able to really do that night in night out. And, and that's like what I do. It's service. And it's like, it, I, it's the right thing to do, but it's also tough to like go from that to, Oh, now I'm up at six with the kids the next morning, mm -hmm. you know? So yes. a lot of times it's like, it's as it's simple as like, Hey, we learned like, don't take the first flight home necessarily, you know, like sleep in. Yeah. And then, so when you get the, to the house, you're ready to be dad, you yeah. know? And I think her understanding of that is, is huge. And we, we've learned that the hard way. Maybe, I was going to but... say all of the positive things are so hard fought because mm -hmm. there was, yes. I mean, we've had some deeply, deeply dark seasons mm -hmm. where we, had to revamp our life and stuff so and now feeling like we're kind of at the age where we've been married a, a pretty long time and have a lot of 
artists that we run into who are younger or just got married or just having kids and kind of feeling a little bit in that mentor role of like, let me give you a little bit of advice. You'll have to learn it your own way, but knowing life is quite the journey, you know, and being able to figure that out together. Mm, So wise, y'all. I was thinking that as you were saying it. I love that you all have had those mm-hmm. opportunities. Because yeah. I was thinking you have a lot to offer mm-hmm. people in that space. And yeah. the mm-hmm. unique things that come with that journey. And the spillover of that to the boys, what they're receiving yeah. from y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Fighting hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about those three amazing little guys. <laughs> so <laughs> raising only sons. Will you all talk a little about just some of the joys and challenges of having only boys? Yeah. I mean, it's... it's um. It's as everybody knows, like the boys are just wild. We kept, we named the third one waters because we're like, surely he'll be the calm one, (laughs) you know, and he wasn't. So (laughs) we have full on personalities um, and very, very different, each one of them. Um, So, but I think I had a brother growing up and I I like, I kind of told her early on, I was like, you just don't understand how it's going to smell bad. It's going to be, there's going to be holes in the sheetrock. Like it's going to, like, you just don't understand what's coming, but just know it's not so bad. You know, it's like, they're going to let you know how they're feeling most of the time. You're not going to have to dig too deep, you know? And, and, um, so that's been, it's been really fun. And she's kind of fallen in love, I think. With oh, the I love it. Boy mom no, I would thing. never have thought that on the, like on the front end but now i almost feel like it's it's like just sticking understanding one gender i kind of got a pass <laughs> um i actually remember reading wild things and you were really into creating a space <laughs> to go and get their energy out so i would say we have many spaces in the house where it's just like go and hit that punching bag do something awesome. so the level of energy is yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> but it's fun. It's it is really fun because I think I think, you know, y'all know this better than we do, but just the di- getting to know the different personalities, you know, the more the more we've done it, it just feel like there isn't like this one size fits all of it. Same same way like if I'm leading the band or I've got a bunch of crew guys out there and stuff. It's 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 really what motivates the different personalities yeah. and what where do they go when they're not feeling great? What does that look like? It's so different for mm-hmm. the boys so far. Mm-hmm. And I would say that's the biggest challenge to me. It's always like I'm like, am I spending enough time with the middle one? You know, mm-hmm. it's like or whatever. It's like or you know, he's not as he's not as good as showing us when he's upset. So I need to figure out like, do I give him the time to mm-hmm. like. So I think that's probably what we're still learning, but that, but it has been the thing. One, one thing I would say that like we, cause we did it last night first time in a little while, but like, that's been the craziest I, and nobody told me to do this exactly, but just kind of, we, we I got think onto it was this like thing from COVID where all the parents, we just us had included just trying to all survive the time in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we started this game where like they can, they can pick, you know, that I put my hands behind my back pick a number or whoever gets it, they can pick an age and what type of story they want from me. So it's a personal story. So it's like, they'll say 28 injury story you know <laughs> oh, wow. so well so at this point the older two is funny are like almost don't want to do it anymore because they've heard every story they're like dad every interesting story you have we've heard you know? <laughs> and so i can start one and whatever but it's been awesome because the the advice i guess that we did get was you know to be able to say you're sorry that, mm-hmm. i don't know if you know the switchfoot band but those mm-hmm. those guys like they're really close to their parents and i asked before we had kids i was like how did they what's working about this and john was like my dad was always quick to say he was sorry when he made a mistake and i was like that just it hit me very hard at the time and so the story thing is in a way a way to do that you know i do it in the moment obviously but but if i'm it, some of the stories are like when you got in trouble mm. you know why that's like well i lied because of this and i i was like do you know why i lied you know we get through that it's like those kind of lessons i think become this um a way to teach that doesn't feel like teaching, I guess. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So that's been really awesome. But last night, of course, the three-year-old is, he's just getting to the age where he's going to be in the storyland next, you know? <laughs> so he <laughs> was pretty funny with his commentary. He, of course, wanted to tell stories to me that he's making up. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so sure. maybe we're not yeah, old enough sure. for it yet. Yeah, but not when not he was there. injured at yeah. 28. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah he, he, that's what he says. He's like, I was there too? I was like, yeah, yeah, you were there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, our oldest, Wilder, is our, like, deep empath. You know, he mm-hmm. needs a little bit, and he's also the wildest. So he needs a lot of nurturing. We did a lot of play therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And but he's the one who you can really like dig in deep with the emotions. He's like waiting for that he conversation will go to happen. All the way there with you. Yeah. Our middle one is we joke that he's a, like a frat boy. He thrives in every situation. His Super teachers confident. always are Just. like, he is so charming. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what are you talking yeah. about? Um, but you ask him about an emotion and he gets so uncomfortable. And he's six, you know? I'm like, how you doing, buddy? He goes. <laughs> and I mean, I am, a, I mean, we're all like semi-professional question askers. So I'm like asking questions from every angle and he will not go there. So like yesterday, I actually was telling him, I was like, dudes, I want to um, make a list of things we can do together. And I want to go, I want you to take me on a date and we'll go do that thing. Well, the oldest is like, awesome. Here's what I want to do. Woods goes, no way. I don't want to go on a date. It's just the idea of like that intimate space is funny. So you really have to figure out, Mm -hmm. we figured out with him, like he can talk about it when he's using like an object. Like if it's mm-hmm. a card with drawings on it, then I could be like, "What do you think this little guy's yes. feeling?" Like, that that was like yeah. a mo- that yeah. was like For a mind you. blowing moment with him. I was like, "Oh my gosh, we have an angle in." Yeah. <laughs> and who knows with the with the third one? He's just and it's so different th- being the third of three brothers versus like when Wilder was, you know, that age. I mean, he is so used to being around older boys that mm. he's really resilient and can, you know, stay up late and that kind of stuff, but. I still, and he's like the happiest little, cutest, happiest little kid ever. Um, but don't quite know what his personality will be like. He's still yeah. developing. <laughs> wow. I feel confident you will know. As <laughs> my, y'all are so intentional and thoughtful yeah. with them. It is so sweet to hear. I do you think studying. it helps to be yes. a little bit older? <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? So mm-hmm. I was like, if we had had kids, and people do it all the time and you figure it out. Um, but I'm like, if we had had kids when we were like 23, we would have been a mess. <laughs> Probably. Mm. Not, not everybody is, but we would have been. We, probably, been. Uh, <laughs> we need a little maturing. So little. God, God knew what our kids yeah. needed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I haven't seen you since you're one week off from camp in the middle of the summer. And I heard everyone got sick. It was the worst. I think the exhaustion finally caught up with us. How are you feeling now? Much better. I got some good rest. I'm staying hydrated in the heat, and I'm taking my vitamins. Okay, last time we talked, you weren't the only one taking your vitamins. (laughs) One of my nephews would like to become a spokesman for Hyah Vitamins, one of our loyal sponsors. Is he still saying more every time he sees his Hyah bottle? Yes, he loves his Hyah Vitamins. He's still trying to convince me to give him more after the first one. Is he still loving marching around the house shaking his bottle he decorated? (laughs) He is so proud of that bottle. I love that Haya sends a bottle with your first order, along with these great stickers so kids can decorate the bottle. He shakes it like he's auditioning to play percussion in Lady A. That guy has good taste in music and in vitamins. Typical children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise, filled with two teaspoons of sugar, unhealthy chemicals, and other gummy junk growing kids should never eat. That's why Hyo was created, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Hyo fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full-body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Hyo is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Haya is designed for kids of all ages and sent straight to your door so there is one less thing to worry about. I love that they ship straight to your door. We've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash RBG. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash R-B-G and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Well, okay, switching gears a little, you mentioned playing football in college. What position were you? I was a wide receiver. Wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Okay, so knowing sports and music and um, just artistry in general. I mean, it seems like you're both studying 
how to engage your kids, the world, all the things. So thinking specifically about music and or creativity, really, and sports. How are y'all trying to introduce those? What are you thinking yeah. about that? She's we could awesome. throw in mental yeah. health. <laughs> She's awesome with the creative thing, I think, mm-hmm. which is um, she didn't grow up maybe that way as much as she would have liked. And so I think she it's always on her mind of like doing that. And oh, so, so she cool. really fosters their, like they're at art camp this week, you know, oh, so they're like, wow. they, they're all into drawing and painting. And, and I, I try to teach them like storytelling and mm-hmm. like every story has to have, you know, obstacle. I'm like, okay, now tell me, now teach me, I'll like train them little, little things like that. Um, and then the music thing, is an extension of that we kind of let them just be creative with it like I'll, I'll let them come up in the studio and they'll just pick up a guitar and you know if they ask me a question about it i'll tell them but otherwise mm-hmm. i try not to like push that too much mm-hmm. you know I, it took me a while i didn't start playing guitar till i was like 16 wow. um and i just because i played sports and stuff my mom was a piano teacher and i just remember hating the fact like all these kids would come over to our house and it would be mary had, had a little lamb all day long you know i was like <laughs> i don't want to do that i know that's not cool you know mm-hmm. so the idea of just like letting them kind of explore a little bit my mom is teaching while at her piano a little bit now and all that so that's Sweet. that's fun but i think our approach is similar with um with sports really in terms of because i played like if if they really want to play then we want to be supportive of that. And we, we're constantly having this conversation, which I know, you know, probably every parent does of just like, listen, I don't care if you play baseball. Like that's not, this is not, you're not doing this for me. So I want you to decide right now. Like if you want to do this, you're going to do it the right way. Like that's, that's what I'm here to, you know, like, so if we're, if you're going to go, you're going to be respectful to your coaches and your mm-hmm. teammates. You're going to learn to play the right way and you're going to work hard at it. Mm-hmm. And if you're not, I'm not taking you. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that's also about art camp. That's mm-hmm. also about, mm-hmm. you know, the way you treat your friends, you know, when we take mm-hmm. you to the playground or whatever mm-hmm. it is. It's like, so I feel like maybe we're maybe doing that too hard in a way just to make sure they don't feel, um, you know, like they're the things that they do are their identity or why we love them. Mm-hmm. You know, the question I'm always asking the boys is like, why do I love you? And, and that I make them say is because, because I'm your son. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's it, buddy. Like you can make, it's not about what you choose to do or what it's, you know, so I think through the music and sports, we're probably trying to approach them that way. Yeah. Um, and it'll be interesting, obviously, as they kind of pick their paths a little bit more of, mm-hmm. of what they, um, our other thing I think is that I learned, you know, from having a brother with different skill set than me, I think the big challenge with the boys is obviously super different personalities and giftings, but when there's a standard, um, that's the same. Mm. And and I'm all, I feel like I'm a, I tell them this story about when I was in college I had a um we had a conditioning test when we came back from the summer it was awful it was eighteen hundred ten yard sprints and anyway you had to do them in a certain fifteen seconds I think it was and thirty seconds in between which was yeah. in it was awful but I was fast and we were in a the skilled position guys all had to go at the same thing so I was a wide receiver running backs quarterback well I had a quarterback best friend he's a coach at Florida now uh-huh. he's got Billy Napier and but he was slow <laughs> <laughs> and he had the same test as me and I'm mm-hmm. so I'm telling him that thing I was like so you understand he had to work probably twice as hard as me to do that same test mm-hmm. and it was really hard to me so the idea of just like saying hey some things are going to come easy to you some things are going to become tougher we don't just because you're different or your skill levels are different or your giftings are different doesn't mean that that standard's not the same. Mm. Um, and so I think that's probably where I, f- I feel like with them, because sports immediately get competitive. Right? Mm-hmm. It's, like, right. it's like, dad, we want to play this game. I'm like, great. Mm-hmm. That means one of you going to lose. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, you sure, know what I mean? So yeah. it's, and I think music's the same way. Yeah. It's like a little bit like that way. So I think we're just trying to balance that. I think for us, sports has been a great tool, but yeah. also like it's been so important to understand sort of where they are in development and what their need is. Mm. When Wilder was four, we tried to put him in soccer or whatever. And he, no, it was just like not happening. <laughs> he's laying yeah. on That's the like, field. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah, it's we're not going to push him at four. Sure. So we're like, we're going to go ahead and quit. <laughs> we're getting out of this. But now he's nine. And um, he's able to say, I want to play this each mm. season or whatever. And we talk about like, okay, buddy, you're old enough to where if you tell me that, I'll spend the money on it. But you're going to go to practice and you're going to try hard. So it's like the both and. um, And he's at an age where he can understand what being on a team is and that kind of stuff. So it's just an excellent tool to use in that way. 
and to help them learn how to win well, lose well. And we talk a lot about their differences. You know, one school comes really easy to, Mm -hmm. and the other, it's going to take a little bit more work. Mm -hmm. And that's life. You know, one sports comes really easy and the Mm -hmm. other has to work harder. So acknowledging the strengths and weaknesses and making them celebrate each other's wins, mm. even if the other one has lost. And that is so, hard. I mean, it's so hard. Good. I know that's going to be from now that's until awesome. forever. Wow. But just being like, hey, we as a family are a team. Mm. So there, I will say, is an excellent coach, too. I mean, he doesn't coach their teams, but I think it helps because, as y'all know, Nashville and Brentwood and Franklin get really competitive yes. with sports. Yes. And two so, years old. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, yeah. And so having a dad that's like done it, had his own path in mm. sports and confident in that to be able to really be attuned to what they need in the mm. coaching. So mm-hmm. it's a lot of put like both and yeah. Mer- Mer- just got a tattoo that's based on the whole idea of both and in life, mm. you know, mm. the push and pull. Yeah. So so. I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about sports as a tool. I love that concept. Oh, it man. seems like it's an end often rather than a means to an end that yeah. involves character. Yeah. yeah. Which is exactly totally. yeah. what y'all are doing. Well, it's like, I think that it's the hardest thing maybe to do in in our own house is to have them fail. Mm. Like, because there's a, such a balance of like, you're their parent, you can't like, you don't want to like, uh, you know, make it abusive of like that kind of, but, but when they get on a team, immediately they strike out. Mm. And now it's like how they're, it's all over their body. That's, that's, and it's, and, and to me, I mean, this sounds bad in a way, but it's like, it's the best thing about it to yes. me because it's like, it's such a training tool for that. Okay. Mm-hmm. How do we deal with it? Why is this important to us? Mm-hmm. You know, what can we do? Did we prepare for this mm-hmm. moment? And if mm-hmm. we didn't prepare, can we really be upset about what happened? And the, the, all those things are so to me valuable. And it, but I do think it would be true if it, if it was like an art competition or whatever, it's like, it is similar in that way, but, but sports at this age, because their friends are playing them and there's, you know, there's a, Mm -hmm. there's certainly a desire to be like cool and liked by the other kids Mm -hmm. and all that. So it's, it's a part that we get to see. It's probably happening at school during recess that we don't get to, you know, like how was recess? It was fine. Who'd you play with? I don't know. You know, it's like, it's a, at least with sports, you get to kind of watch it go down yes. and kind of coach it a little. Yes. In answering that, you actually talked about development. And we just finished a season of the podcast called Ages and Stages. And would love to ask you both just have you had a favorite age or stage so far in the journey? I know it's so cliche for people to say every stage gets better and better. And I, but I do think that's true. Um, to, I can say the hardest stage. <laughs> the hardest stage to me is probably like that nine month stage when they're fully mobile, but have zero reasoning skills. So they literally <laughs> will crawl <laughs> off that cliff. You know, That's good. it's such a nice thing when you, when you can leave a two year old on the couch watching something for like 15 minutes to go bathe the other one, you know. Yes. Um, but right now, I mean, three is so, three and four is so cute and creative and just like pure. And then like six going to first grade, but, and some of it's character. I mean, our nine-year-old is starting to deal with like those pre-adolescent things and mm. you're just, yeah, it's just. I was at the three is the most entertaining to me. <laughs> it just in terms of if I'm going to walk, if, if I just want pure entertainment, I don't need to parent, you know, it's just like, if I walk in the door, I'm going to laugh first at the three-year-old, mm-hmm. which is great. Mm-hmm. It's, and he's like our little cuddle buddy. And, you know, he comes and gets in the bed in the morning first thing and he's down to cuddle and kiss and the whole, like, he's just sweet like that. Um, but I, the other part I do love the, I like getting under the hood with, like, I love to have one of them in the back of the car on the way home from practice or a game. And I, and kind of get in there in the way I can to start asking questions about how do you think it went, you know, and let them talk and mm-hmm. kind of, I feel like that, or we have a jacuzzi, which is hilarious, mm-hmm. but like, I will, I will, yeah, the boys will get in there with me at any, even if it's hot like this, they'll get in there with me. And they, for whatever reason, just open up and talk in that way. So like wow. the, when I can get them you know, into that, I really enjoy like them thinking about, they're talking about their jobs and what they do if they, you know, had money and all these, all those kind of things is so fun to me. So mm. I'm like that probably three is easily the thing I would say is my favorite in the sense of just pure fun. Mm. Um, but I really enjoy getting to know them. Mm. I think that's like the, that's, that's ultimately, um, 
probably the most rewarding part about being a parent, mm. it seems like to me. Yeah. What would y'all each say is your favorite parenting advice you've ever been given? Uh, the one that sticks out the most, and this probably just reinforces my own, like, you know, need to talk, but mm-hmm. I heard a youth pastor one time, this is before we have had kids, he was talking to the congregation. He was like, you know, I know with the teenagers that I work with, they open up at the least convenient time mm-hmm. for you. And we're experiencing that now, even when our kids were littler, they were going to bed by like six or seven. And we were like, we have the evening to hang mm-hmm. out. But now it's like, nine o'clock with this summer. So we're having our time to talk is getting harder to figure out. But he was like, you know, your teenager is going to want to talk at 930 at night when they're going to bed. And he's like, don't rush it. Mm -hmm. You know, that is a short window of time in life. Like, don't rush through it. And so that was a good reminder for me because it is. I mean, moms at the end of the day are like, everybody get in bed, (laughs) go to sleep. I'm tired. But as we look to the future, hoping to be able to keep just committing to being present with them in the moments that they do want to open up. Yeah. I think this, the, you know, the thing I said about, you know, being able to say you're sorry, it's, is probably the thing that I like is in the back of my mind the most about, you know, I'll, I'll tell, I mean, everybody, this is with the band stuff. I don't know. It's like, nobody reacts poorly to vulnerability. Mm. You know, it's just like, that's a, the opener for every conversation is that, and you're fine. You're going to be okay. You know, it's like, and I think that's the truth with the boys. The most, most times when I get them to actually understand a concept, it's through a story that I actually went through and I'm telling them how I messed up or how I should have made this choice and why I didn't make it and all those. So to me anyway, that's like the the times where I feel like really like that, uh, some level of attachment that's different than normal, Mm. um, comes from that. So I, anyway, that's, I think, I think knowing that's one thing, but then I'll be putting it into practice is another, but I've, I've, I've just found it to be kind of fun. I don't go there. It's not like I'm telling them like bad stories that they wouldn't understand those kind of things, but it's sure. more just like, Hey, you know, when you lie, um, you know, the reason I lied was because I didn't think people would love me if I told the truth. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, you got to know that's not true. Like I'm telling you right now that this is, you know, so we kind of go through and it, for whatever reason, if it comes from a story of, of sort of you know, my shortcomings, that normally is the place that, you know, they kind of dive in a little bit more. Mm. Those stories are like way more impactful than the accolade stories. You know? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. this is not how cool that is. That's that, that they, they're, they think that's fine, but they, they don't react to that in the same mm. way they do. It's like, Oh, you made that, you made a mistake. Oh, you, mm. you know, like those kind of, um, the flaws are probably the best teachers, obviously, always. And so uh, allowing the boys to see that in certain places is, is real important to me. Mm. I love how you're prioritizing that. I know, and me I, too. I think with kids in general, but boys in particular, because I think we as males just tie so much of our identity to performance and competence mm-hmm. and that you are telling these stories that yeah. they have this dad who's so talented, wildly successful, done all these things. And you're telling these stories about here's where I messed up over mm-hmm. and over. I just can only imagine all the ways that's going to stick and the freedom they're going to experience through it. So thanks. you too. We don't want to end this I conversation. Know. We are both <laughs> so <laughs> enjoyable, so oh, wise. And so much. Richness. Yeah, we do want to respect your time. So mm-hmm. we end every conversation with something food related so we jump from the substantive to the silly (laughs) and would love to ask you a two-part question so part one is queso or guac and part two is what's your favorite taco i'm a queso guy Mm. um and i'm really more of a quesadilla guy than a taco guy (laughs) i'm just gonna throw that in there i'll joke that i will go i will eat a chicken quesadilla anywhere (laughs) i don't care where it is it's hard to mess it up um, Shout out to that's Mojo's, true. your favorite. Mojo's is yeah. my one. Mexican. I like I like a Mexican <laughs> restaurant. I can take the kids to, and if they're allowed, it's not annoying to everyone else. <laughs> um, there's someone out so they can run around outside at, at that place, and and there's somewhere to park right near it. Mm. That's the kind of my. I'm yeah. not an ambiance eating guy. I'm like, just make it easy. Yeah, I think I'm a guac gal mm. with a lot of lime juice on it mm-hmm. and then i think i like your classic taco with like the unhealthy ground beef with mm. <laughs> sour cream and lettuce and tomato Good choice. So, yeah. yeah i mean who, who doesn't like mexican food yes yes yeah, it's, it's it's four or five times a week for us probably <laughs> yeah.
So we're in on this question. <laughs> y'all, thank you so much. Thank y'all, thank so y'all for grateful. having us. Oh, yeah. We're so grateful for your time and wisdom. David, what a team we have that we get to call friends who help make this podcast possible. Amanda Young, our operations manager. Chris Starrett, our engineer and producer. Our management team at KCH. And we are thrilled to be a part of the That Sounds Fun Network. Our music was created by the insanely talented Dave Haywood of Lady A. And if this podcast felt helpful to you, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, all the things. We are grateful for you and cheering you on always.